In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we take up one of the all-time fan favorites, The Trouble with Tribbles. Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of Trekking Through Compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Tracking Through Compliance, Episode 44, The Trouble with Tribbles. In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we consider the all-time fan favorite, The Trouble with Tribbles, which aired on December 29th, 1967, and occurred on Stardate 4523.3. Story synopsis. The Enterprise is called to Deep Space Station K-7 by a Priority One distress call. The space station and planet are in a quadrant, disputed by the Federation and the Klingon Empire. The Quadrant was the site of the Battle of Donatu V, which occurred 23 years ago. The terms of the Arganian Peace Treaty were that Sherman's planet would revert to whichever side could manage it more efficiently, or develop it, I should say. Kirk is furious after the distress call is issued by Niels Barris, the undersecretary in charge of agriculture in this quadrant, and the person in charge of the development of Sherman's planet. Turns out not to have been with justification. In fact, Barris wants someone to guard the Quadro Triticale grain, which is bound for Sherman's planet. His assistant is Arnie Darwin, and Mr. Lurie is the station manager. A Klingon ship shortly arrives at the space station and requests that its crew be granted shore leave. Kirk tells the Klingon leader, Koloth, that he can bring down 12 members of his crew at a time, but he will provide a security guard for each Klingon who beams down. Meanwhile, the intergalactic trader Cyrano Jones gives Uura a trilling creature called a Tribble. She brings it to the Enterprise, where it promptly begins reproducing. Jones tries to sell Tribbles to Klingons on the station, but the Klingons respond, but the Tribbles respond by emitting high-pitched yelps when in near proximity to a Klingon. Trouble breaks out between the Klingons and the members of the Enterprise crew who are also on shore leave. When one of the crew compare, compares Earthers to Regulan bloodworms, this infuriates Chekhov, who becomes more upset when the Klingon goes on to call Kirk a swaggering, overbearing, tin-plated dictator with delusions of godhood. However, Scotty holds Chekhov back even after the Klingon calls Kirk a Denebian slime devil. However, when the Klingon calls the Enterprise a sagging old rust bucket, which is designed like a garbage scow, and should be hauled away as garbage, Scotty loses it, punches him, precipitating a barroom brawl. When Kirk questions his crew, no one admits starting the fight. However, when Kirk questions Scotty alone, he admits that he started the fight and reveals that he refrained from fighting while Kirk was being insulted, but was forced to take action when the Klingons insulted his beloved Enterprise. The Tribbles begin proliferating, i.e. breeding, throughout the Enterprise, and Kirk accidentally sits on one while taking a seat in his command chair. Kirk orders Uhura to clean the Tribbles off the ship and beams down to the space station to confront Cyrano Jones. However, since the only animal, it is only illegal to transport dangerous animals, and Tribbles are not dangerous, Kirk can do nothing. After... Kirk finds the Tribbles have spread aboard the Enterprise through air vents. He becomes concerned concerned that they may have infested the grain storage lockers on the space station, which is holding the Quadro Triticale, which is to be used in the development of Sherman's planet. This hunch proves correct, and opening the overhead storage bin produces a rain of Tribbles on Kirk's head. Spock calculates that 1,771,561 Tribbles are likely to exist on the station, assuming each Tribble has a litter of 10 every 12 hours over a period of three days. However, Spock notes that many of the Tribbles are dead inexplicably. Uh, When the station transporter room is cleared of the Tribbles, one of them yelps at Neil Barris' assistant, Arne Darvin. Kirk verifies that Tribbles coo for humans and even Vulcans, but yelp at Klingons. Then he asks McCoy to perform a tricorder scan of Darwin. McCoy verifies that Darwin is a Klingon, and he reveals that Darwin has poisoned the grain, which killed the Tribbles. 
Darvin admits being a Klingon agent and admits to poisoning the grain. He's arrested and tells Clerk Kirk tells the Klingons to leave the Federation, and Jones is ordered to pick up every triple on the station, a task that Spock estimates will take 17.9 years. Luckily, another freighter can be diverted to provide the replacement grain for Sherman's planet. This does not th- solve the problem of detribbling the Enterprise. However, uh, the ship, through innovation, is able to do so. And the tribbles are finally removed from the Enterprise when Scotty transports them, the whole kit and caboodle, onto the tr- Klingon ship immediately before it blasted out of warp orbit. And the episode ends with the famous line, where there'll be no tribletol. So, uh, as you can tell, uh, this is one of my most favorite episodes as well. And so today we're going to have two fun facts on this. Fun fact number one, this episode was voted the best episode of Star Trek by viewers in the Sci-Fi Channel's Star Trek 40th Anniversary Celebration. It was voted the best episode by Empire Magazine when they ranked um, the series number 43 on their list of the 50 greatest TV shows. And the book Star Trek 101 by Terry Edelman and Paula Block lists the episode as one of the 10 essential episodes from the original series. Fun fact number two, and particularly appropriate in, in light of the demise of Mad Magazine, the line in which Spock says that Kirk heard what Neil Barris said, but he simply could not believe his ears, was lifted directly from a Mad Magazine spoof of Star Trek, which was entitled Star Bleach, that had just been published. I'd like to talk about David Gerard uh, a moment. He became a featured writer for Star Trek, literally based upon this episode. And he was with Gene Roddenberry through uh, his time at TNG. But he came estranged with Gene. And when um, Ken Ray and John Champion interviewed him on missionlogpod.com, It was a very emotional and difficult interview to listen to. He clearly loved Gene Roddenberry, but was uh, very mistreated by him and said some things that were uh, very unflattering about Gene Roddenberry that I'd never heard before, particularly around uh, drug abuse and uh, alcohol abuse. But uh, David Gerard took the um, negative event of being uh, fired from Star Trek TNG and estranged from Gene Roddenberry himself and used that uh, to have another door open for him. And as he said, he began writing science fiction novels and opened up a new career for him. So it uh, was a very moving and powerful interview that I would urge you to check out on Mission Log, missionlogpod.com. But it also shows that Uh, When one door closes, another one opens, and the universe is pretty good about that. So as fun as this episode was, uh, what are the compliance takeaways? So the first one is, um, what's the financial health of your suppliers? And Cyrano Jones is a solo uh, licensed mining and mineral prospector uh, crossing the galaxy looking for stuff uh, that he can then sell. But when it turns out that he has... Uh, transported a animal, i.e. the Tribble, which outside its natural environment uh, is becomes a dangerous animal because of its breeding, he has to clean it up. Well, uh, does he have the financial resources to do so? Do they? Uh, does your suppliers have the financial resources to uh, indemnify you? What about if there's a uh, compliance investigation and they are required to indemnify you for uh, their violations of the FCPA? Do they have the financial wherewithal, either themselves or through insurance, Uh, to cover you. Second, what happens when management controls are too siloed? Well, here we have the example of Niels Barris, who as a undersecretary for agriculture has the right to use a priority one uh, distress call. Uh, That's only to be used in times of emergency. In other words, when an attack is either imminent or ongoing. Uh, Then uh, Kirk uh, points this out to him and he jumps Kirk's head to go to uh, an admiral uh, to get Kirk to come into line. So what happens when your management controls are too siloed? And finally, social media monitoring. Do you engage in social media monitoring to see what's being said about your company? What about what your employees are saying about your company? If that um, 
had been done in this case, what would have been said about uh, Neil Sparris and his assistant, Arne Darvin? Uh, you're going to have to wait for uh, DS9 to find out what happened to Arne Darvin. Um, I don't think, uh, or rather, I don't know if we'll be doing a Star Trek and Compliance series on the uh, Star Trek series DS9, but uh, Mission Log is currently doing that, so you might check in with Mission Log uh, to find out in the episode Trials and Tribulations. So, as you can tell, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I cannot watch this enough. The comedy is great. The acting is great. The actors all stretch out uh, to show their comedic uh, turns. And I can't uh, emphasize or rather encourage you enough to, to see this episode. I hope you'll join us tomorrow where we take up the episode, The Gamesters of Triskelia. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.